So I just got a bunch of mandolins in the mail, as you can see here. And sometimes when you string up one of these mandolins right out of the box, there can be some setup issues that really affect the tone, the string action, the intonation, buzzing, all sorts of issues like that. And that's definitely the case with some of the factory made beginner mandolins that I have here, but these issues can occur on any mandolin over time. So whether you've just got your first mandolin or you've been playing for a while and you just want to know a little bit more about how to make these setup adjustments on your own, this video is for you. And I'm gonna show you a five step process that you can take right now to get your mandolin playing and sounding like a dream. I will say up front here, if you don't feel comfortable doing some of these steps, or if you're working with a valuable vintage or boutique mandolin, then it's always gonna be safest to call a trusted mandolin luth here for your setup work. But otherwise, I think anyone can set up a mandolin safely at home using this five step method. You don't even need any fancy tools and even better, it's free. And we'll get started here with step number one, fitting the bridge. Check out this Ibanez mandolin here. This one has some small gaps between the bottom of the bridge feet and the top of the mandolin, which isn't ideal. To get the best tone on your mandolin, we want the two feet of the bridge to make full contact with the top of the mandolin to best transfer the vibrations of the strings to the wood of the instrument. We also want the bridge to be leaning slightly back to counteract the tension of the strings, which wants to pull the bridge forward. And if your bridge is leaning too far forward, that also could cause some tone issues or even some damage to your mandolin or to your bridge over time. Not every mandolin is gonna need this step, but if your bridge isn't flush with the top of the mandolin or it's leaning too far forward, then it's important to do this step first as it's gonna affect everything else that we do here in this video. And to fit the bridge, we're gonna sand the bottom of the bridge against the top of the mandolin, which I know sounds a little bit scary, but it's actually not that hard to do. For this step, we're gonna need some sandpaper sheets, one around 120 grit and then another around 220 grit. And you're also gonna need some low tack tape, like painters or masking tape that won't damage the finish of your mandolin. So we'll start by sliding off the tailpiece here and loosening all the strings. There you go. So we'll take a sheet of the rougher 120 grit sandpaper and we're gonna cut it into a small rectangle that spans the space between the two F holes here. Just like this. So now we're gonna tape the sandpaper to the top of the instrument with the grit, the rough part facing up, not down. You don't wanna damage the top of your instrument here. And we're gonna place it somewhere in between the two points of the F holes, approximately where the bridge is gonna end up. So now we'll pick up the bridge, make sure that the thicker G-string slots are on the G-string side here. And we're just gonna start sanding in small motions with the bridge leaning back at the angle that you want. Just like this. We don't wanna go too far in either direction since the curvature of the top changes the further you go. As you go, you can take a look at the bottom of the bridge to see what's been sanded down and we'll keep going until we can see the whole bottom of the two feet are making contact with the top, which might take a few minutes of sanding. Once the two feet have started to make full contact with the sandpaper, we're gonna switch out to the 220 grit to smooth things out there. There you go, nice smooth finish on the bottom. And we're sitting at a pretty good angle here, so I think we're good to go. This is a one and done setup step that you'll hopefully never have to do again on your mandolin once it's done correctly. Now that we've got this bridge fitted for this Ibanez mandolin, I'm gonna make sure that we place it in the right spot here on the top so that the notes stay in tune up and down the neck. If your bridge has ever moved or fallen down while you're changing your strings, this step is for you. So here, you're just gonna need a tuner and a set of strings. And I'm gonna try to reuse our strings here from earlier, but this would be a good opportunity to put on a new set if you want to. And by the way, if you're new to changing your strings and you need a little bit of help here, I have another video on that topic here on the channel. There's a link in the cards above. And as we put on these strings, we're gonna keep the tension really low so that we can move the bridge around as we go. Something like this to begin with. So double check here to make sure that your bridge is approximately in the right spot between the two points of the F holes. 
And you also might need to adjust it left or right to make sure that the strings are centered on the fretboard as they go up the neck. And then we'll start by tuning just the A strings up to pitch. And it's important to intonate the A string first because if you start with the outside strings, the extra tension on those strings could shift the bridge unintentionally to the left or the right. So once the A string is pretty much in tune, you can check the intonation up the neck by playing the 12th fret harmonic. That's the chime you get when you rest your finger above the string at the 12th fret and play the string. And you can check the intonation by comparing that to the 12th note fretted you can tell does not sound in tune, right? That note is way sharp. So if the fretted note is sharp like that, you can change the pitch by moving the bridge back towards the tailpiece. Shouldn't be too hard to move the bridge, but just make sure to grab it with both hands and pull back so that the bridge doesn't tilt or fall over. So after that change, we're gonna check again, 12th fret chime against the 12th fretted note. Now the note's closer, but it's a little bit flat. So we're gonna adjust again in the other direction. You can always remember flat means move the bridge forward towards the fretboard. So we'll check again now. And to my ear, that sounds pretty close. You know, no mandolin will ever be perfectly intonated, but when the notes are close like that, the mandolin will resonate a bit more fully like this. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our D string. Tune these up to pitch first. So now we'll check the 12th fret on the D string. Pretty close, maybe a little bit flat though. So to make adjustments here, it's a little bit more challenging because we want the bridge to stay pretty much in the same place under the A strings, but we can still pivot this side of the bridge upward or backward to change the intonation on the D and the G. So I'm just gonna swing this side of the bridge forward ever so slightly. And we'll check it again here which sounds pretty good. So we'll repeat this process for your thinner E strings first, and then your thicker G strings last, making adjustments as we need to, and you should be all set. Once the bridge has been fitted and intonated, you wanna make sure that this bridge doesn't move. So when you change strings, be sure to just take one off at a time and replace them as you go so that you're maintaining tension on the top. So after you've got your bridge fitting in the right place, we can move on to step number three here, which is adjusting your action. And the action is just the distance you have between your strings and your fretboard. And it's something we mandolin players like to talk a lot about because it really affects your experience playing the instrument. The higher your action, the more volume and tone to some extent you'll have, but the harder it will be to hold down the strings with your left hand because of the distance away from the fretboard. And then the lower your action, the easier it will be to play at the risk of sacrificing your tone and volume. So it becomes a bit of a tight roping balance here. So I like my action somewhere in the middle, but maybe a little bit on the lower side. And I've got my main Apidius mandolin here. We can actually measure the action here by putting a ruler on the 12th fret and measuring the distance between the top of the fret and then the bottom of the string. Here on my G string, I've got about 1.5 millimeters of space. And then on my E string, it's a little bit lower, maybe about 1.3 millimeters. That could be a good place to start if you're looking for a reference point, but honestly, I don't really measure my action. I just go by the feel. And every mandolin, every player is gonna be different. And just by experimenting, you're gonna start figuring out what you like on your instrument. So I'm gonna grab this Eastman mandolin over here, which has been intonated and the bridge is fit in place, but the action is a little bit high. So I wanna show you how to lower it. And we're gonna adjust the action by lowering these bridge wheels right here. To do this, it might be best to loosen up your strings by a few turns here. So I just did about five turns on each string. That should be enough tension to keep the bridge in place, but allow us to change the action a little bit easier. And then we're just gonna turn these wheels clockwise to lower the action, righty tighty, so the wheels are gonna be going down on those circular posts. And if it's too hard to turn these by hand, even if you've taken the tension off the strings, you might wanna use a pair of needle nose pliers like this 
to really carefully adjust the wheels for you. And we'll just go really slow here, maybe making two or three quarter turns at a time, always remembering how much you've turned it so that you can reverse the adjustment later on if you need to. And then we'll just tune this back up and see how it feels here. That is feeling much better with that lower action there. If by chance you lower your action too much, you might experience some buzzing on the frets. If that's the case, you might wanna raise your action by doing the opposite, right? Loosen up your strings and turn these wheels counterclockwise to the left to raise your action a bit. And don't feel like you have to do it equally on both sides. Some people like their E string a little bit lower than their G string side. So you can make minor adjustments on either and see what you think. Also, after adjusting the action down here by the bridge, you might find that your action is still too high down here by the nut. But to adjust this, you need to file down the slots that the strings go in or even unglue the nut and sand down the bottom to lower it, which requires some more specialized tools and expertise, in which case I'd recommend contacting your mandolin luthier. All right, on to the scariest step now, which is step four, adjusting your truss rod. And if you've never done this before, be sure to listen to this whole section because it's a little risky and you don't wanna damage your mandolin. And not every mandolin is gonna need this, but if you've adjusted your action to a reasonable height already and you're still experiencing some buzz towards the nut or the middle of the neck, then this step could help. That's what's going on with this lower mandolin here. I've got the action pretty nice. I still have a little bit of buzz on the fifth fret on the G string. So most of the time we want our neck to have a little relief like this, a dip in the middle. This is called an up bow position. I'm exaggerating it here with this ruler, but this is gonna allow all the strings to ring freely up and down the fretboard. But if your neck is bending the other way in what's called a back bow position, that's definitely gonna be bad because those frets in the middle are probably gonna make contact with the strings causing the unwanted buzz. And if your neck is perfectly straight, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but if there's unevenness in the frets, that also could cause buzz in this position. That's the case here with this lower mandolin. And if you look down the barrel, you can see the neck is pretty perfectly straight. So the truss rod is a mechanism that goes to the center of the neck here that allows you to slightly adjust the bend in the neck. So if you have a back bow or a flat position neck and you're experiencing some buzz, you can loosen the truss rod to allow the string tension to pull the neck into more of an up bow position to hopefully get rid of the issue. And you may have guessed it, if you tighten the truss rod, it's gonna put your neck into more of a back bow position. But here is the danger, because if you tighten your truss rod too much, you could risk breaking it, which is a very expensive repair. Plus, putting the neck into a back bow position is not gonna help our situation with the buzz. It's actually gonna make it worse. So for those reasons, I'm gonna recommend that you don't tighten your truss rod without the help of a trusted mandolin luthier. But if you're in the same situation as me here and need to loosen your truss rod, you're just gonna need two tools. One is a Phillips head screwdriver to take off the truss rod cover here on the headstock. And then you're gonna need a 5 16 inch socket to actually adjust the rod. And sometimes you get these truss rod tools that have a two in one like this one. And we'll start by taking these screws off the cover here. And depending on your mandolin, you might need to loosen the strings to get this cover off, but this one here is just gonna slide right off. And in this little insert, that's where our truss rod nut is. And you know what I'm realizing as I've taken the truss rod cover off, this truss rod does not take a socket, but actually takes an Allen wrench. Here, I'm gonna be using a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench to do the trick. You wanna make sure that you have the right tool while you do this because you risk stripping the nut, which is also kind of an expensive repair. <laughs> and once you've got this in, remember righty tighty, lefty loosey. We don't wanna tighten this, so we're gonna turn this to the left, and we're just gonna go a slight turn at a time. Maybe a quarter turn. And then another quarter turn. Let's see if that did the trick. Still getting a little bit of buzz, so I might try a couple more quarter turns now. There you go. Yeah, that seemed to do the trick. I'm not really getting the same buzz on that fifth fret anymore. Looking down the barrel, you can see a little bit more relief as well. So. We've done our job, we'll put the truss rod cover back on and we'll be good to go. Oh, that's feeling way better.
And once you've gone through those previous four steps as needed, the last step here is just to mitigate any additional buzzing that you might be experiencing while playing. There's a lot of working parts in the mandolin as we've seen in this video, and sometimes if they get loose, they rattle around a bit, which is so annoying. For instance, this really cheap Van Gogh mandolin is buzzing like crazy. It doesn't have a truss rod, so we can't adjust it there. The action's already pretty high, but I'm still having a lot of buzz. That sounds awful, right? <laughs> so we're gonna go down the list of possibilities to see where this buzzing might be coming from. And we'll start off by checking for any loose screws that we might have on the tailpiece, on the pick guard, on the truss rod cover, if you have a truss rod on your mandolin, as well as on the tuning machines, both on the ends and on the backside here. And we really don't wanna over tighten any of these screws, but if you can see that one is noticeably loose, that could be knocking around causing some unwanted noise. That did not seem to fix the issue, so we'll move on to the next likely culprit, which is the tailpiece. And especially with these cheaper two-piece tin tailpieces that you really have to be careful when you slide off, sometimes these can cause some buzz. Check if it buzzes with the cover off still. Still does, so that's probably not the issue, but if the tailpiece was your issue, you can stick some leather or felt down here to absorb some of those vibrations. While we're down in this area of the mandolin, another thing that some mandolin players like to do is to stick little rubber grommets in between the strings here to kind of mute any extra sound that these strings might be making. Next, we're gonna check out our pick guard here, which I think might be the issue in our case. And if you can see on this one, the bottom of the pick guard is actually making contact with the top of the mandolin, which is not ideal. There's metal on wood. And I'm not exactly sure what the best way to mitigate that would be. We could try putting some felt underneath the metal to see if that works. Maybe some paper as well. Let me just stick some cardboard down there, see what happens. I think that worked. Sounded as good as a $120 mandolin can sound, I think. You know, sometimes these pick guards can be so buzzy that the best solution is just to take them off altogether. And I might do that with this one eventually. If you want to as well, then all you have to do is unscrew this screw right here on the top, as well as the one on the arm here on the side. And it's gonna leave two little holes on the body of the mandolin, but you won't have to worry about the buzzing anymore afterwards. So that seems to have solved the issue for us, but if you're still experiencing some buzz after all of that, it could be a sign of a more serious setup issue. And to identify the problem, we have to figure out whether the buzz is coming from your open strings or from fretted notes up the neck. So if your buzz is coming from an open string, that's probably a sign that your nut or your bridge isn't slotted properly, which is gonna be a job for your luthier again. But if you're getting a buzz from certain frets up the neck, you could go back to steps three and four, try raising the action or loosening the nut a little bit to see if that solves your problem. If that still doesn't work, then it probably means that either your frets are uneven and need some work, or there's a more serious truss rod adjustment that needs to be made too. Either which we probably should trust to a professional. For some additional helpful setup resources, I definitely recommend Bradley Laird's book, The Mandolin Handbook. You can get the ebook over on his website at the link below. And then here on YouTube, there's some really cool resources too, like the Rosa Stringworks channel. Up here in the cards, Jerry Rosa has some pretty awesome videos on setup. And from time to time, you might need to revisit some of these steps as your mandolin changes with the seasons, humidity, and age. But hopefully after these five steps, your mandolin should be sounding in tip-top shape, just like the ones I've been working on here. And by the way, if you're curious about how these beginner mandolins sound compared to one another, then definitely check out this mega review video that we just did here on the channel, where we pit these seven common beginner mandolin models against each other to see which one is best. It's a really fun video, and I'll see you over there.